Hey everyone. So in this video, I want to talk about something that I realized the other day, which was that the eating disorder and my 18 month cockapoo puppy have quite a lot in common. And like, this might seem totally weird and crazy <laughs> to you, but, but it really got me thinking because one of the things that I'm struggling with a bit at the moment with my dog is that he he really craves attention and he will bark and bark and bark at me until he gets the attention that he wants and he's got this really piercing high-pitched bark that just kind of really gets in there and it's it's designed to to get my attention and often often he succeeds and I will either give him a, a scratch behind the ears or I'll give him the um, uh, the crust of toast that's left on my plate that he he really wants and and that will temporarily make him stop and he'll temporarily be happy and content and he'll be quiet but then he cottons on to the the fact that he like if he kind of joins the dots he's like okay well if if i bark then that's how i get the treat or if i bark that's how i get the attention so it, when i reward him when i when i give him that thing to stop him from barking it's actually kind of reinforcing that idea so it's kind of reinforcing to him that yeah that's how you get my attention by barking which actually isn't what i want to do at all but it's when the the barking is that high pitched and kind of piercing i'll kind of do whatever i can to to stop it and the reason that i saw or i kind of see a crossover between this and the eating disorder is that when i had anorexia and the voice and the noise in my head was was so loud i would try and do whatever i could to to stop that or to to make it quiet just even just for a minute and so that's kind of the equivalent of of petting the dog and what i've been taught by youtube videos and dog trainers is that the the only way to get the dog to stop barking is to ignore it and this can be really hard when when he's kind of right in my face <laughs> um, and is and is desperate for the attention but the same goes i think for the for the eating disorder because it's like the more the more attention we we give to it then the more it it wants so it's like it will it will be chattering away and it's like it's learned that that's what it has to do to to get our attention so i wonder if it's like applying the same logic that we do to to dog training or at least i try to apply to to training monty to to how we see the eating disorder that actually it's it's not necessarily saying anything important or something that's that's worth our attention it's actually just it's just trying to to get our focus and yet we spend so much time certainly i did anyway trying to to figure out what what it was saying why it was saying it what i had to do about it but actually what if what if that wasn't actually the case and what if we could we could almost let it bark itself out <laughs> kind of almost exhaust itself until it then it then quietens down and we allow that to 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 pass and allow allow that to to kind of be be done on its own 
rather than us actually having to try and do something about it to try and make it be quiet in that moment. And I feel like certainly thinking back now that although that may seem totally counterintuitive because certainly I found that when that noise was really loud it felt really uncomfortable it felt really really counterintuitive to to kind of allow it to to do its thing and let it pass on its own but I wonder what it would like be like if actually we we kind of said okay well yeah it might feel a bit uncomfortable to to ignore that noise or to to not pay it so much attention but instead let it to uh, let it pass and i just wonder what what impact that might have for you and i'm certainly going to be trying my best to to apply that to monty too so i'd love to hear what you think let me know in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video